All right, let's get all this stuff set up here. So uh, as you know, today is the last Sunday for Christmas, just in case you didn't know. If you have not get, gotten gifts yet, I encourage you to do that sooner than later. I myself will probably be out on the 23rd getting gifts because that's just what I do. I hate getting gifts. I, I mean, I shouldn't, let me rephrase it. I love getting gifts. I am the world's worst shopper. I, I really am. I, I don't like buying gifts. I never fight, feel that I buy anything that's good enough. So at this time of year is the time of year that actually makes me stress like there's no tomorrow. It gets me to the point of really being out of the Christmas spirit. Uh, it's sort of like this. I'd bark in, Abakanesia who? I hate you! I would be Benson who? I hate you! Hate, 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 hate. Double hate. Loathe entirely. Did you ever get to that point in, in the Christmas season that you just don't have Christmas joy? You're just struggling. At this time of year, for me, it's just, it's, it's, I'm busy. There's so much going on. I seem to put more stuff on myself. And I just have a hard time remembering what Christmas is all about. I get caught up in the commercialism. I get caught up in the materialism. I get caught up in the worldly things of what Christmas is. The other night, you know, one of the things that we generally watch at Christmas time is Dolly Parton has these Christmas movies of when she was a little girl. And if you've ever watched the movie, then you understand at one point, um, uh, Dolly's mother uh, lost a child just before Christmas. And, they, and she, the mother was really, really struggling with that. It was stillborn. And, and Dolly, as a little girl, took it very, very hard. And she looked at, at her mom, and her mom finally was kind of starting to grieve and get past it. And Dolly walked up to the mom and said, Mom, I thought you lost your love. It doesn't feel like you love us anymore. And the mother, the actress, looked at the little girl and said, Dolly, love is not a feeling, it's an action. It's an action. Love is not a passive thing you do. You can love broccoli, but I hope you don't love it the same that you love your mother, father, daughter, child, spouse, uh, family member. We use love often. We say we love this, that, or the other. Oh, I love that movie. It was so good. And I've really come to the point in my life that I really try not to use love for anything except for people in my life. People I know or people I don't know. We are called as Christians to love. Uh, unlike Scrooge there, who uh, or the Grinch, who hated everyone. He loathed, I love that line, loathed them. Why? Because they had treated him poorly. If you ever watched the movie, it's, it's a funny movie, but they treated Grinch horribly from the time he was born because he was different. Well, guess what? If you call yourself a, a Christian, you're now green and hairy because you're different. You're called to be different because you're called to love. The world says hate those that you don't like because it's no big deal. Who cares if they die? Who cares if they have a good life? Who cares if they're not eating when they get home? But you're called to be different. You're called to love everyone, even those that look different than you. Maybe green and hairy. Maybe those that have stuff dripping out of their nose or out of their ears. Maybe those that haven't taken a shower in a couple of days or a couple of weeks because they can't. We're not called to love the people sitting in this church necessarily. Yeah, we're family, we're brothers and sisters, but most of us have pretty 
defunct families? Come on, we've all got that one relative that when they come over, you go, okay, he's not here for more than 45 minutes usually. Set the timer, go. We're called to love regardless of hair color, skin color, eye color, accent, tall, short, or just different because we ourselves are called to be called to be different. There used to be a poster I had in my room. It said, be unique. Be unique. Everyone here is made in the image of God, even though some of you are much taller, some of you are much shorter, some of you have blue eyes and green eyes and red eyes and purple eyes and what other other contacts you can throw in. Some of you have white hair, gray hair, <laughs> no hair, blonde hair, brown hair, blue hair. It doesn't matter. We're called to love. And I really had to get back to the basics on this one because this last couple weeks just doesn't seem like Christmas to me. Maybe it's not because there's not any of that white stuff. I don't know. Maybe because I think my mom died December 9th, 15 years ago. My sister died this year. There's just things going on, and I just am struggling with the Christmas season. Today, I put on my favorite sweater. Thank you for the compliments of the sweater. The sweater is probably about 40 to 42 years old. The cuffs are still rolled from when my grandmother gave it to me when I was still, I believe, in junior high, high school. So if you think about that, I've had this sweater for possibly over 42 years. I don't even remember. And I pull it out every Christmas. Because I think of simpler times. I remember the times of just going to my grandma and grandpa's house. Feeling loved, having a table full of food, and getting to drink all the RC Cola in the big 16 ounce bottles that I could drink. I loved Christmas back then. I loved Christmas because I, I didn't have the weight of the world. And, and you know what's funny? Is we don't have to have the weight of the world on our shoulders. Christ did that. He took the weight of the world on his shoulders when he was hanging by three long nails. We don't have to. Yet we find it or at least I find it difficult sometimes to not do it. If you have your Bibles, turn with me. We're going to be in Romans. Paul is ta talking to the church in Rome, and he's trying to encourage them for what they are called to do as Christians. I encourage you to read all of chapter 12, but we're not today for sake of time. We're going to start at verse 6, and it says... Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly. If prophecy, according to the appropriation of his faith. If service, in his serving. Or he, or he who teaches in his teaching. Or he who exhorts in his exhortation. He who gives with liberality. Who, who, he who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without hypocrisy. I want you to just stop right there. Today is our fourth week of Advent. We've talked about the hope of, of Christ. We've talked about the peace of Christ. We've talked about the joy of Christ. And many of us could say that any given day we have any of those three, but I wonder how often we have complete love in our heart. Love without hypocrisy means that we love regardless of dot, 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 you fill in the blank. I don't care. I love you no matter what you do. I love my kids even though they can drive me crazy. I love my wife even though she can drive me crazy. I love all of you although you can drive me crazy. Why? Because I'm me and I'm different and you're you and you're different and we struggle like that. Marriages aren't perfect. Families aren't perfect. Church families are not perfect. But guess what? We are to love because of the grace shown to us. If we go to one another and we do not show love, we are showing love with hypocrisy. Anyone outside these church walls will say, stinking Christians are a bunch of hypocrites. 
Because one minute we love, the next minute we're cussing like a sailor. One minute we love, the next minute we're looking at somebody going, do you see that guy? Gosh, he smell. I wish he'd just take a bath. Yeah, the dude hasn't had a home in six months. Where would you like him to take a bath? Chip through the pond that the animal's been drinking and pooping in? Love without hypocrisy means that we love regardless of everything. Christ went to the cross with me in mind. He said, Bill, I love you this much. He spread out his arms. He didn't say, Bill, you've been a big dumb jerk most of your life. I know there's going to be a time of about 12, 14 years you're going to walk away from me. You're not even going to come to my house and, and worship me anymore. You're going to act like you're better than me, but guess what? Pound them. And I'm going to be here for you when you're ready. Love without hypocrisy means regardless of our past, regardless of our future, Christ loves you for who you are. He made you in his image. Do we love truly without hypocrisy? Do we love without judging someone else because of the color of their skin, the way they talk, the way they act? Uh, we just went to Tennessee. I love going to the South. I really do. I love that Southern draw. My family is from Mayfield, Paducah. We could be related, so we got to talk later. I don't know. This is weird, like the Virgie connection. I've heard of that whole thing before. Never knew it was Mayfield, Kentucky. I love that Southern John. They're just so happy, y'all. You know, come on, let's eat something. I love that. I, I, I totally could move to the South like tomorrow. Not, But you guys would have to come with me, so let's just say that. But I love that because they just seem, they've always just seemed so genuine. But they're different. I go down there and they're like, oh, that dude's from Chicago. You ever hear that? Yeah, you got that Chicago talk, forget about it. Or New York, or LA, or, or Hawaii. How about Russia? How about those, those people from China? How about the people from North Korea? How about the people from Australia? How about, how about instead of saying any country, how about we just say God's land? God created it. So every living person on the face of the earth, you are called to love without hypocrisy, without qualms, without judgment. You are called to love. Abhor what is evil and cling to what is good. Be devoted to another, one another in brotherly love. Give preference to another one another in honor, not lagging behind in diligent, but fervent in the spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, deserve, persevering in tribulation, devoted to prayer, contributing to the needs of the saints, practicing hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not be haughty in mind, but associate, associate with the lowly. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Never pay back evil for what is evil to anyone. Respect what is right in the sight of all men. If possible, so far as it depends on it, be at peace with all men. Never take your own revenge, beloved, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, and I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For in doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. And verse 21, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Christmas is about the birth of the one who came to love you. Yeah, we could say, oh, I get the feels, right? I'm all joyful today. Woo, feeling joyful. And then the world crashes in and our joy, poof, gone. See, I really believe that every one of those words that we've studied the last four weeks is not the feels. I don't come to church to get the feels. Ooh, I feel good. Great. In 10 minutes when I stub my toe, I'm not going to feel so good. But hope 
and love and peace and joy. Those are action words, servants of God. Those aren't just for us to make us get the feels. Those are for us to do to someone else that doesn't have hope in Jesus or the joy of Jesus or the peace of Jesus or those that have never truly felt love. I bet you we can all think of someone in our mind. We may even not even know their name, but we all know kids and adults that have never truly felt love. That's our job. It's an action. We, we all say it at weddings, right? Corinthians, love is this and love is that, love is this. But what is the last line? Love never fails. Love never fails. Of all the things I've done in my life, I failed at numerous things. The love will never fail. If we remember that Jesus loved us to the point of death on a cross, shedding every last bit of blood in his body, love doesn't fail. Because that ro love rose again. And that love is now at the honor, at the right hand of the glory of God. And guess where we're headed? Right next to him. We're headed to the place of glory. Our home has been prepared and our place is ready. But he's not ready for us yet. Because he says, servants, I need you to continue to love those unlovable. I need you to continue to love those you cannot stand. You loathe. And as a Christian, that four-letter word that starts with an H and ends in eight, we should never, ever say. There's nothing we should hate. Sin. But we should never, ever say I hate a person because that person was also created in the image of the living God. Today when you leave here, I hope you're excited. I hope you get the feels. I hope you walk out excited because you have the love of Jesus in you right now. So here's my challenge to you this Christmas season. Be full of hope. Be full of joy. Be full of peace, but love like you've never loved before. Love every single person you see. Love every single smelly, snotty, dirty person you see. Love every person that has ever stabbed you in the back in the past. I want you to love them every person that's ever said something behind your back. If you went to high school, you know somebody was talking behind your back. I want you to love them. I want you to love your boss. That's easy. I got four great elders. And I got Jesus. I got the best boss in the world. And I also have the other boss at home. Love them. See, the point of today's lesson is simply this. Jesus came to love. Jesus was born in a manger, lowly means. He didn't come in pomp and circumstance. He didn't come as a king to be born, as a king to reign with a crown. He came to die for the crown of thorns and three piercing nails. Jesus' way of saying, I love you, was not to say, I'm going to give you everything you want. Jesus' way to say I love you was to say, I want you to come home with me. I, I want to bring you to my house. I, I want to have a sleepover with you for all of eternity. And while you're there, yeah, Dad, he's going to be pit cooking up some good brats. There's going to be this tree of fresh fruit. Twelve fruits changes every month. And it'll be for the healing of everyone. There's going to be streets of gold and the river of water. It's 
going to be beautiful. When you come to my house, yeah, nobody's ever going to get COVID, not a thing. Don't even worry about it. Cancer, not a thing. Don't worry about it. Flu, not a thing. All those doctors that are coming up, hey, we want doctors, but guess what? You're out of a job because it's going to be perfect. I love you that much. I love you to the point of giving myself to you. As Christians, we are called to love to the point of giving ourselves for someone else. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to die for someone else? No greater love than this, than a friend lay down his life for a friend. Jesus calls us to love. Jesus doesn't say, hey, I hope you feel good about me loving you. Jesus says, love as I love you. It's an action. Have peace in your life, that's an action. That's called turning off the TV. Have hope in your life, that's pretty pretty easy. That's an action word, open up your Bible. Have joy in your life, turn off the TV, open up your Bible, and begin to be around those that are the same like-mindedness of you. Every one of these words was not just a word to make you feel good this Christmas season. It is those things to tuck in your heart for the rest of your life. We're called to love. Pretty simple. Now, the hard part, defining what love is. I'll give you a clue. It's in the book. Check it out. Father, we praise you for this day. Father, we praise you for your glory. We praise you for your love. We praise you, Father, for the peace and hope and joy that we have through Jesus. Father, we praise you that in the craziness of this world that we have peace and joy and love. We have mercy and we have grace. Father, we have the ability to be with you now with your spirit inside of us and we have the ability to be with you someday in the future when we will be in your glory. But as for now, Father, use us as your servants, as your hands and feet. Father, use us to show love to those who have not been loved or seem unlovable to the world. Father, help us to be humble servants, not overbearing hypocrites to the world. Father, move our heart. Break our heart for what breaks yours so that you would be glorified when others come to know you. Father, I pray a blessing on each and every one here today. I pray, Father, that you give them an amazing Christ-centered holiday, a christ -centered centered time with family and friends. Maybe just a Christ-centered time of being at peace with you and having your peace filled. Teach us, Father, how to love because I don't think it's natural to us anymore. I think we need to learn. Give us the opportunities, Father, to love in your name, to love in your glory, and to love for your gospel. Father, we just praise you. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the Spirit. And we thank you for this time to be in your house to worship a mighty God and Father. And we ask this in your